Hello, hello. So I am going on an artist date today and I'm pretty nervous about it. I don't like going out by myself all the time, but I'm definitely getting better. And I wanted to take you along with me, but I do have tips about doing artist dates and going out. So keep watching the video to see that and go ahead and give this a like and subscribe if you'd like to see more like this. And also stay till the end so you can see what I actually create here in the coffee shop. So let's go. Hey everybody, Jacqueline here. Today I want to dive a little deeper into the artist way. Now I already made one video about this of why you should read this book and I will leave that down in the description below so you can go watch that um, and then come back to this video. But one of the things that Julia Cameron wants you to do is artist states. So I wanted to dive a little deeper into that. So I'm going to read a little bit about what Julia says about what an artist date is. An artist date is a block of time, perhaps two hours weekly, especially set aside and committed to nurturing your creative consciousness, your inner artist. In its most primary form, the artist date is an excursion, a play date that you pre-plan and defend against all interlopers. You do not take anyone on this artist date, but you and your inner artist, AKA your creative child. That means no lovers, friends, spouses, children, no taggers on of any stripe. And the other purpose is to fill your creative well. I touched base on this in the first video, but essentially you have a well and you are taking out of it when you're creating. So you need to fill that back up by inspiring yourself, your inner artist. And while Julia does say, to go completely by yourself. I 100% agree with this, but I also 100% agree with that there are some people like myself who are anxious, who don't wanna go out by themselves every single week. Some of my artist dates I did at home, but I want to tell you that realistically, you can change this up a bit. I found that by the third week, I wanted to go out but I wanted to go out with some friends and I had just moved to Colorado and I was making new art friends. And so my art friend brought another art friend and they showed me a new place um, across from a coffee shop that I usually go to downtown. There was another cute cafe and I had never been there before. And so I've gone there since on an artist date by myself. But the cool thing about potentially bringing your friends with you one, it keeps you accountable. You can tell them all about the artist date and what it is. Two, they could bring you somewhere new that you haven't been before. And three, it's a wonderful little baby step to getting yourself out there to do these artist dates. So again, try to do it by yourself. But if you need to, if you need to bring someone just to begin, by all means, go ahead and do that. Another realistic tip is to wear your favorite outfit. If you look good, feel good, you're gonna like feel really good about going out and about. Um, go get your favorite drink if you want to. Maybe it's a coffee, maybe it's a tea, maybe it's a lemonade. But if you start your artist date with making yourself just like, I don't know, treating yourself a little and making yourself feel good about that instead of venturing off into the unknown of Ah, what is this artist date I'm doing completely alone and by myself? It's always nice to give yourself some comforting things to help you get started. It helped me mo get motivated um, to do them. And it showed me the benefits of what artist dates can be by doing it. So kind of setting the mood of it by doing those favorite things of yours. And you could even start with when you go by yourself to a favorite coffee shop or a favorite park or a favorite corner downtown because you wanna do some urban sketching. Like go somewhere that you know, because that's always gonna help you start. And then another week you can venture off to somewhere new or somewhere you haven't been before. Maybe like I said, if you go with some friends or one friend, you might go to a new place that you haven't before, but make sure you're going and you're filling your creative well with inspiration because that's one of the purposes of these artist dates. Another purpose that I have found that came from the artist dates is not only are you filling your creative well, but you are filling your own personal well. You have already taken the time, you've set it aside 
to go do this for yourself. You're away from your family, you're away from children, you're away from everyone when you're doing it by yourself. And you're just, you're filling your own personal well. Like you don't need to every week be like, okay, this is my time for artist date. This is my time for friends. This is my time to, you know, go do the errands, go do the things, go do shopping, whatever. You can bunch some things together by, by going with your friends on these artist dates. You can fill your personal well. You could also start the artist date with your friends. They leave and you go continue on and do your next artist date or continue it. I went with some friends to um, the cute cafe and then we went out and painted together. And when we were done, I dropped them off at their cars because I had driven us to, uh, to a spot. And then I went out to the park that we were out and I just went out by myself. Like I continued it. I was feeling so good that I was like, yeah, I'm going to continue going out and painting some more. So feel free to continue those artist dates if you do start with your friends. But know that this is also the purpose of filling your own creative well. And it just, it just helps you out a ton. So I say all of that because sometimes it can be hard to follow the book exactly, but I say that small steps is progress. So if you need to, to get yourself to go outside for artist dates, start with friends and then venture off by yourself, by all means, go do that. I want you to have the motivation to want to do these artist dates. I don't want you to feel like, ah, she says I have to do it this way and it's a course and I need to follow it, you know, step by step. Yes, there is goodness in doing it by yourself. I highly, highly suggest doing as many of these artist dates by yourself, but there's also no harm in starting off somewhere just to get you going and to get you motivated. So take all of this how you will. And I'm, I'm excited for you to do some artist dates. So let's dive into the next thing. I have some practical tips in the first video that I created about the artist way for artist dates, but I wanted to expand on that. So one about artist dates, I would write down all of your ideas. The first ideas that pop up um, in the book, she lays out a few of them. Just write out all the ideas that you would want to do. You could watch other videos to learn about things. You could ask family members and friends to be like, what would be something you would want to do by yourself just to go out free, low budget, high budget, whatever you want. I also have for you a free download in the description below of different ideas that you can do. In that free download that I have, I have it broken down into all the different seasons. We are currently in autumn, so I have some ideas like go outside and collect leaves and dry them out so you can make a garland for your fireplace. Um, bake some yummy cookies and package them up cutely to send and bring to friends and tie a little note on there saying, how much you care and appreciate and love your friends. You could do it for family members too. I have things about wintertime about going to a bookstore and looking for cozy stories and checking out the kids section, or you could even go on a solo movie date because it's super cold outside, but you can go to the movies by yourself. You could get popcorn for yourself because you're only paying for one. You could go to a kid's movie, whatever movie suits your fancy and then is out, but you could even go on a movie date by yourself but I have a whole list of ideas um, to help get you started. So be sure to check that out down below. Another tip I would have is to not only just schedule it out the beginning of the week, you can schedule out what you want for that week. You could schedule them out to be every Tuesday afternoon is when you can do it or every Saturday you can do it. Now I know a lot of you probably have nine to five jobs, so it might need to be a weekend. So maybe Sunday afternoons when your family's chilling at home or you know, just, it might just be a really good time for you. So you can plan them to be the same time every week or just serendipitously do it each week whenever it works in your schedule. Cause you might have a more flexible schedule. And also when you do that, maybe set an alarm on your phone to remind yourself, Hey, today's the day you said you were going to do your artist date. So set it early in the morning for you to remind you that you're doing it that afternoon. Or if you're going to do it in the morning, remind yourself the night before, because it's not, always a thing that you do each week by going on these artist dates just for yourself. So it's good to always set an alarm and a reminder to let you know, take some time for yourself. Another tip that I've mentioned before is to wear your favorite thing and try to like plan it accordingly with your date. If you're going to the movies, 
um, by yourself, wear comfy like yoga pants and a nice sweater and, you know, just be nice and cozy because you're going to be sitting there watching a movie in a dark room. Or if you're going to go to a park because it's springtime and you're going to go look at all the flowers, wear a favorite dress or a favorite floral, you know, top or a tie or something, you know, wear whatever you want to, to make yourself feel good, feel confident. And maybe it kind of matches your, um, whatever your artist date may be. I wouldn't want you to wear a cute favorite dress in the middle of winter when you're going to be walking outside. So, you know, plan accordingly your outfit, but pick maybe some of your favorite things just to, to feel extra cozy. And I had mentioned that maybe you start your artist dates with your friends, but even if you don't want to do that, maybe you feel silly to tell them about this artist date idea. One, don't feel silly. They're probably going to think it's really cool. And two, just tell them to show how excited you are. They may have never even heard of these before. My roommate was the one that told me about the artist way and she told me a little bit about it. And I was like, oh, that kind of sounds cool. Again, I wish I had done it back then, but I didn't. And here I am this year, finally completed it. But tell your friends, tell your family about it. Show them that you're excited to do this and they may see a change within those 12 weeks of, wow, Jacqueline, you're, you're becoming more confident. You're becoming more excited. You're, you're having fun with this. I want to do this. Tell me about it. You could lend them the book when you're done with it. So tell your friends, community is such a good thing to to motivate you and to do, do your artist dates. And also feel free to bundle your ideas. Maybe one of the artist dates is to go thrifting and another artist date is to go do a picnic. Well, why not bundle them together and go to the thrift store early in the morning and get a cute basket that might work perfectly or a blanket that you wanna lay out because you don't wanna ruin any of your blankets at home. And then you can go home, you can make your little basket with your lunch and then go out on a picnic date or, you know, bring your lunch in a cooler or something like that. You get it, but you can, you can bundle some of your ideas as well. Like there's no rhyme or reason except to just get yourself out there, even if you're doing it all at home. Again, um, in the first video, I suggested that there's 12 weeks, so maybe do half of them outside of your home and the other half in your home. Um, that's just a good like rule of thumb that I did for myself to make sure I was getting a nice variety Sometimes the weather might not be ideal. Sometimes you don't want to go out that week and you just want to feel cozy inside. By all means, you can do that as well. So sometimes you can bundle your ideas. <laughs> and a tip about museums. Usually you'll see out there for artist dates to go to a museum. Love this idea so much. But sometimes you're, tr you're on a budget and you don't want to spend as much money. So what I have for you is to check the website, call them, See if there's a free admission day. There is a museum downtown where I live and every second Friday or something like that, there's a free admission day. So that's what I did the first time I went to the museum because I was on a budget. I could only spend very little or free things, you know, for me to do for my artist dates. So a lot of my artist dates are at thrift stores or outdoor so I can do more free things. But if you really want to go to a museum, see if there's a free admission day. Now, there might be a lot more people on those days. Um, in the summertime, there might be more kids there or something because parents are trying to find things for their kids to do. So perhaps try to go when they first open. It might be a little bit quieter, um, but it's just a good place to start if you're looking for something free to do that you know other people might wanna be doing as well. So those are just a few of the practical tips that I have for you about artist dates. And another thing I'd like to mention is maybe as an artist, you want to create a little art bag. Now, if you're a musician, if you're a writer, you can make a writer's bag. You can make a music bag to if you compose music or something. But for me as an artist, I have my artist bag. This is my artist tote bag. Um, I have other bags for when I'm doing YouTube or um, if I'm just doing plein air um, painting or whatnot but I like to have a little artist bag with me. This can be your favorite little tote bag, your favorite little backpack, a favorite purse you have, a favorite fanny pack you have, something like that. But I always suggest, um, at least for me, when I went out and did these things, I like to always draw or paint. So this is my little bag. So I suggest putting together something. 
I have my plein air um, set up, which I do have a video all about that if you'd like to see it. I bring some paints, some pencils. Right now it looks like it has my minimal art kit that I have here, but I usually have my art tool kit with me. I'll have this and sometimes only this because it'll have some pencils, it has some paints, it has a little notebook, a little field notes notebook so I can write in it if I need to or sketch in it. Because sometimes it's nice to just toss in here. And now you have yourself a nice little tote bag to create if you go out and about and you want to create. Again, you don't have to do this, but this was something that I like to do. Um, so whether I went to a park, a museum, a coffee shop, I liked sitting there and being able to bust out a little bit of art supplies and, and go about that. Now, a tip I have for this would be to keep it simple. I don't want you to overload your brain and bring all of your mixed media type art stuff, and all your notebooks and things because it might overwhelm you, especially if this is at the beginning of your artist dates and you're not in the flow of going out or doing these sort of things. Leave that for when you're at home and you're doing different projects or, or artist dates at home. To go out, like I said, sometimes I just bring this little, this little guy right here because it has some pencils, um, a little bit of art graphite, an art little pen and little pieces of paper. And like, that's all that I need just to sit there and play around while I'm out enjoying my artist date. I also wanted to let you know what I got out of doing these artist dates for 12 plus weeks now, because I'm still doing them. One, it made me more independent. I have been a person that anytime I went out besides thrifting, I can, I can thrift and grocery shop by myself. But when I wanted to go to a park or go on a hike or go to a museum or go to a coffee shop, I usually went with my husband. We, we just love doing a lot of things together, but this, this course taught me that I need to take time for myself. I need to fill my creative well and teach my inner child artist that I need to go out and play and I need to go out and have fun. So it gave me a lot more independence and it helped me with my anxiety. My anxiety of going outside the home, my anxiety of being around other people and just helping myself breathe um, and say that everything is okay for going out and doing these things. I'm speaking, I guess, more towards the anxious artist because I, I am that and you might be too. So if you have any tips for, for me or for other anxious artists, that would be super duper great to let me know. But it helped me be less anxious it helped me see more of where I live. Like I said, I moved back to Colorado this year and I'm just learning more cool places around here. Not only because friends have taken me or I've just looked on Google Maps to see like, where's all the art supply stores? There's only one really good one. So I go to that one. Where are the cute coffee shops? Oh, there's this cute store next to this coffee shop. And then I walk the road or the sidewalk um, and I see another cute place that I may want to go to. It just, it helps you see other parts of where you live. Cause maybe, maybe you're a hermit. Maybe you stay inside a lot more, but if you go out a few times for these artist dates and you get curious and you see other places that you didn't even know existed, it's really fun. And it makes you feel like a kid because as a kid, everything was new to you. You'd go to the museum, you'd go to the park, you'd go, you know, wherever and it's just it always felt new and exciting so by going to new places and exploring new things it makes you feel like a kid all over again and that's that's one of the purposes of these artist states so i give you all my good wishes of getting out there doing these things by yourself doing baby steps of doing them with your friends if you need to just to get out there and to help yourself be a more independent less anxious uh, artists. So I urge you to go out there, do these things by yourself, baby steps of doing it with a friend or some other artist friends if need be, and just get out there, try new things, try new places. I also found that by bringing my little art kit with me, that by doing a little bit of art each time I went out, so at least once a week, I also do art every day, but um, it helped me improve my art. So you may see 
with your writing, with your drawing, with your sketching, with your urban sketching, with your nature painting or something that if you incorporate it a little bit each week, even with your artist dates, you'll see an improvement as well. So I saw a huge improvement in those 12 weeks and even more so since. So, so that's another cool thing that, that I got out of it. That is it, my friends. I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, feel free to check out that download for artist date ideas. And if you have any ideas, let me know in the comments below. I love adding to my own list of things to do. Other people might love your idea. So please fill my comments down below with all the ideas. I think that that would be super fun for all of us to have a nice little reference for more ideas that people have done. And that's it. I will see you on the next one. Cheers. Okay, I'm back in my car, as you can see. Um, I didn't want to do any talking in the coffee shop. There was a lot of people. It was there's a lot of people like studying and working, and the music and vibe was really like mellow. So I would have been too loud to chat actually in the coffee shop. But I wanted to show you my final things. So I did bring my art toolkit in my little bag, and I just used all the little things in here. Um, one of my tips is I said to keep it minimal. And for me, minimal is something like this. I can have a little bit of graphite, a little bit of colored pencil, and uh, my water brush for when I do the watercolor soluble um, graphite as well. So that was minimal enough for me. But let's show what I did. So the first page I did um, was just about 20-ish minutes um, where I put down my Posca paint marker and then I just did colored pencils on top of it. So nothing super fancy, just things that were in my head. Like I haven't, this isn't from any place. It's just thoughts about rolling hills with a little house that has some smoke coming out. Um, I have a limited amount of colored pencils I bought. So the blue was going to be the wonderful smoke that came out of the chimney. And then I did tiny little panels of just like close-ups of this big one here. And then I thought it'd be fun to kind of do some journaling. Um, when I first walked in, I was greeted by the barista and she loved my tote, my tote that has my cute little kitty cat, black kitty cat. Every time I take this tote out, people love it. I love this. I use it all year round, not just the fall time, but in the fall time, I definitely get more comments um, and compliments. Um, but she asked what I was doing and I was like, you know what, I'm just going to doodle today. And she thought that was super cute. And so I wrote about it. Oops, something fell out. Um, I wrote about it. And then as I was writing, I just kind of started following, like, if you can see, I just kind of started following around the edges. Um, I've never journaled that way before, but I thought 
it, this would be a fun way to just start something, just panels, 20 to 25 minutes, and then five minutes of just journaling. But I thought this would be just a fun little exercise. And so I did that. Um, and then the second one I started doing with my water soluble graphite. And that is just the painting. Oh, someone's walking by. Now I'm going to feel awkward. <laughs> and the second one is where I took my water soluble graphite and my water brush pen. And I just started creating a mountain. And I, I wrote down uh, Mount Rainier question mark because it kind of started looking like Mount Rainier. I've been there many times and I've painted it many times that I think that's just what flowed out of my hand. Um, and then I made another panel to do a more detailed um, look, sorry, a more detailed drawing of Mount Rainier. But then my alarm went off on my phone because I only had 10 minutes left or a little less than 10 minutes left on the parking meter. So I didn't want to have to walk all the way back to the car feed it like 20 more minutes and then go back in. So I just cut my little date just about 10, 15 minutes short probably. And now I'm gonna go home and I will see you all in the studio. Mm -hmm.